Washed Up Sports Washed Podcast. Up sports podcast. Washed, Washed Up Sports Washed Podcast. Washed Up Sports Podcast. Washed Up Sports Podcast. What's going on? 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 What's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a Washed Up Sports Podcast. This is episode 32. My name is Evan Klein, and I'm glad to be joined alongside my co-host, Max Lindley. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another reinstallment of Washed Up Sports Podcast. <laughs> That's a new one. It's a new one. I thought I of like it right that. then. I like that. Yeah. We'll another, stick with that. Welcome back to your weekly programming. <laughs> Welcome, welcome back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> That's what I was going yeah, for. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 32, it's a lot. Yeah, we were just talking about Yeah, that. we were talking about Long that. time. Yeah, a lot of hours. A lot, uh, lot of, yeah, a lot of hours of us on YouTube. Yeah, great to be bringing you guys your, your 32nd episode of a Washed Up Sports podcast. Though. Yeah. We have a really special episode today. Absolutely. Why? So... We have a very special guest joining us a little bit later. That is Paul Mulcahy, headband highlights himself, the guard for the Rutgers men's basketball team. Scarlet Knights. Paul's an unbelievable player and, you know, an unbelievable person as well. So absolutely. Absolute, a great guy. It was an absolute pleasure to get to talk to Paul, and I really hope you guys enjoy this one because, you know, this was, you know, I enjoyed this one as much as any. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed watching it. It was, it was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Um, but before that, we have a word from our sponsors. So if you're looking for an ad-free broadcast, you can find that with a whole lot of other things on our Patreon. We'll link that down below. Now a word from our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by The Daily Scoop. Daily Scoop is the premier dog walking and pet sitting service in Bergen County located in Glenrock. Daily Scoop provides service not only to Glenrock, but to several surrounding towns as well. They ensure that you are getting the best possible care for your pets while you cannot be with them. From the simple dog walk to daycare at The Daily Scoop, they have you covered. And if you need to leave town to visit your family or friends for the weekend, have no fear. Daily Scoop offers pet sitting services as well. Inquire for more at www.thedailyscoop.com. That's scoop with a K at www.thedailyscoop.com. Here's Max with their Instagram. Daily Scoop LLC. Check them out. Scoop with K. Today's episode is in partnership with the Retro Recovery. Retro Recovery is New Jersey's number one source for vintage clothing and 90s nostalgia. <laughs> From vintage football jerseys and starter jackets for the draft to vintage baseball tees and caps for opening day, the Retro Recovery has you covered Get you swagged out. <laughs> Hell and yeah. free shipping is offered nationwide. Hell yeah. Woo! Shop the spring collection now at theretrorecovery.com. And if you want to save a buck, use code washed up. That's W A S H E D U P for 10% off of your order. That's code washed up at theretrorecovery.com. For 10% off your order, get your gear now. All right, everyone. So now we're going to you know, get into it. We're going to start off with a little bit of golf. We haven't talked golf in a little bit, but it's been really exciting, you know? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't had the opportunity to talk about it because so many other sports have been playing. But now right. that it's literally NBA Finals are in the, uh, in the last couple games, we'll get to that later. Um, baseball is in the thick of the season. So really, golf is one of the only other sports to watch right now. Yeah. I'm not and, complaining. And it's the it's the I was going to say the heyday. No, it's like the crunch time. Crunch if you, time. If you will. I like that. Yeah. It's crunch, crunch time. time. And you know, let I, I, how could we talk golf without talking about the Open from last week? It was unbelievable. It was. It was good. It was great to see Colin Marikawa tear apart that field. 24 he, years old, man, and I think I I'm comfortable saying right now that Colin Marikawa has the best iron game in the world. Absolutely. In the world? In the world. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he, he has, I mean, Tiger in his prime hasn't beat, but Tiger's not in his prime, so I can't argue with you. Yeah, no, right now I'm saying. Absolutely, the, that's what the, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Absolutely. So he was just unstoppable, and, I'm, and at 24, I think, I mean, to, it's, to it's say that he- up from here. To say that he can only get better is frightening. Yeah. You know, so- And true. Right. Yeah. Um. So- you had someone else you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about Louis Usta, who's in. I love hearing you say that. <laughs> say it again. The, Louis Usta, who's in the South African. I love it. You know, Louis, another top, another top five finish, but top 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 five, top ten. Louis, you know, he's up there these days, but for some reason, Louis can't get one. 
Yeah, I think the last time he won a major was in 2010. He was T2 twice this year so far, I think. So, Jeez. So he's playing good golf, but he can't seem to finish on Sunday. So, yeah, Louis, you know, get it together, man. You know, be a winner, please. Come on. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm sure. not the biggest Oostahoosin guy, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like when you're around there so often, you know, just go get one, guy. Come go on, go get one. John Rahm had a great performance at the Open. Meant to say that he came out really strong on Sunday. Yeah, as well. He did. So, and then the last guy that you know we have to talk about is you know Spieth. Yeah. Who played amazing, finishing second, which is awesome for him to be up there. You know, we've talked about it before, but Spieth has had a lot of ups and downs since he won that Masters back when he was young, and. Still young, but I'm saying like back when he was younger. Kind of in the same boat as Louis used to who's Yes. <laughs> um because he's been playing well, but n- not really consistent. And yeah. Like hasn't been able to pull through and finish. Yeah, he hasn't won since the Valero. And he he's been better though, and you know, he's been up there, which is great to see. Um I root for Spieth, so I like seeing him play good golf. So Happy to see that, you know? Always. Next week, we have the 3M Open. Yeah. And, you know, we're approaching some big ones. Some yeah. big ones are coming up. Um, we got Northern Trust coming up. You got the BMW, the Tour Championship, of course. So stay buckled in and, and stay tuned into what's going on over in the PGA. It's exciting stuff. I know it's not for everyone, but if it is for you, you know, buckle your chin strap. Yeah, and <laughs> stay tuned because a lot of golf this summer. So we'll be covering it over the next couple of weeks for sure. No doubt. We got to get back out there to the Cascades at Crystal so we can do our... Um, oh, yeah. I got to kick Evan's ass. Our match play again. Yeah, I've gotten so much better since I played Evan and I like, last time. And I, like, haven't played a lot at all this summer. I've been no, no, I've so played, much. like, probably thrice. Wow. Thrice? Yeah. I have never heard anyone say that before. Thrice. It's unreal. <laughs> So Max has only played thrice. I've played a couple of times this summer, but not nearly as much as I would like to I would like to be in terms of golf game. Sam. But anyways, are we good to move on from golf or did you have any closing closing uh thoughts? Watch out for John Rahm at the end of this year. I like that take. I could get behind that. That's all. The Spaniard Rahm. Yeah. He's very good. Oh yeah, he's phenomenal. So Klein's corner is. It's back. Oh, I think I got my swagger back. Klein's <laughs> corner. So <laughs> I, I was thinking I hadn't done a Klein's corner in a while, and you know the the outpouring of support we had with the Klein's corner T-shirts, and you know all that was unreal. So I had to bring it back for the not even for the one time. This is you know Klein's corner. It's not here every week like it was, but it's it's here. It's it'll it's good. It's well. It's healthy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so guys, good to have you back here in Klein's corner. And you know what else? I'm gonna go back to my roots and talk about the UFC. Absolutely. Why not? Right. So you know we just had. You know, some big events in the past. I did talk a little bit about Connor and Poirier when that was happening. But I want to talk about next weekend. This weekend, the 24th of July, Corey Sanhagen is fighting TJ Dillashaw. This is TJ Dillashaw's first fight back since he was suspended for performance-enhancing drugs, I believe it was. And this is going to be a phenomenal fight. It was already canceled and pushed back one time. It's only a fight night, which I think this could make a you know a main event on a, on a, any card, but I'm so pumped for it. I like Sanhagen a lot, and I think he's going to beat TJ Dillashaw. I think TJ Dillashaw is amazing, but he's going to be a little rusty coming out of it, coming out of you know that long suspension. So I think this is just going to be a great fight. I got Sanhagen. I'd like to hear who you guys have. I'm going to bring back the uh, hit me up with your – remember that? You were like, who the hell is hitting you up? I used to be like, hit me up with your takes. Like, if you want to argue about this, like, we'll talk on Instagram. No, you said hit me in my DMs. <laughs> DM me if you want to talk. And you were like, who the hell is DMing you? (laughs) I was like, probably no one. And like, nobody does DM me. Actually, I did have one kid who I hadn't talked to in like five years probably Snapchat me and be like, who you got this weekend? (laughs) Today? 
No, this was like a while ago. Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. I think this was before Ka- he asked me about Khabib and Gaethje when like Khabib, Khabib's last fight is what he asked yeah. me about. Well, that's crazy. But for the rest of this uh, <laughs> this fight night, this San Hagen Dillashaw fight night, there's a couple other fights. I like Kyler Phillips is fighting, and he was really electric last time out. So I'm really excited for him. Really good girls fight we got. No, actually, I shouldn't say girls. I say women. Women's, yeah. yeah sorry. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, but you're I good. I, like, I wouldn't say boys no, fight. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like. you're good. You're good. So, yeah, Kyler Phillips is somebody that I think is definitely going to come out and be great this Saturday. And then we have another woman's fight that I'm really looking for, which is Miranda Maverick, who is absolutely uh, unreal. She's great. And she's fighting Macy Barber, who's also really good. Both only have two losses in their professional MMA career. So I think that's another great... Doing something right. Yeah, that's another great fight on the main card. I remember last time Maverick fought. She, that was the night uh, Nganu beat Stipe. So I think uh, I think that should be a great one. And then just one one last fight that I have actually in the prelims this weekend is going to be Nazruddin Imavov against Ian Heinich. So I got Heinich here. I think he's an absolute force. Imavov actually, you know, he had a, a close fight his last time out, but I, I think I like Heinich there. A lot of people... A lot of people um, think that those two are both very exciting. So, you know, guys, thank you for uh, revisiting my corner. I have a question before we leave. I'd love to hear your question. When is Islam Makachev fighting he again? last week. Oh, he did? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? What do you mean, why didn't I tell you? He won by submission in the, the first round. No, but the fourth why didn't round, you tell round. me he was fighting? He won in the first I would have watched. Is it's it, all, is it's it, all good. Is no it worries. my responsibility to, like, tell yes, you? Yes, you're my UFC guy, Evan. You know this. I wouldn't know the dates if it weren't for you. Yeah. Do you want me to like turn the TV on and like put the no? Just for text you me and like just text me. Be like, right. yo, Islam Makachev is fighting. Okay, so every time he specifically fights, you need like a or any like cool fights. Okay, watch this Saturday. Watch Corey Sanhagen. Well, I was TJ just here Dillashaw. for Klein's corner. Obviously, I'm gonna fucking watch. But you didn't <laughs> talk about Islam Makachev on Klein's corner last week, did you? Now, buddy, we didn't have Klein's corner last week. Well, that sounds like a you problem. It was a special episode collaboration, so I don't think it is a me problem. I think it's an us problem. It's an us problem for sure. <laughs> <laughs> God, Max, holy shit! All right. Anyways, <laughs> guys, it's time. It's time <laughs> yeah dude I, i'm not doing the bruce buffer again that's a one time only on one air. time only on air but guys it's time for the interview with paul mulcahy i really hope you guys enjoy this and um yeah here we go hashtag headband highlights we are now thrilled to be joined by Rutgers guard for the men's basketball team headband highlights himself paul mulcahy paul thank you for being on today man uh, i appreciate you bro i'm excited I'm really excited. No doubt. So first off, I got to congratulate you on the historic season you had, you know, helping Rutgers first March Madness win in 38 years. You know, I know it's hard to put into words, but what's it like to be a part of such a historic group that accomplished so much last year? Uh, Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's really cool. Uh, It's something that I came to the school to do. Um, Obviously, it had been a long time since we had won, so it was cool to, you know, have the school kind of rally around us, and uh, the alumni base was super excited, so it's special to be a part of it. Uh, It's something that we want to build on, but it was good to kind of get that, get through that door and and try to open more doors after that, so. No doubt, especially, you know, once the fans get back in there, nothing beats a a packed rack, so that's... uh... That's big for sure. So something that I've actually, you know, I've wanted to ask you. So I've been curious about this for a long time. So after the um, the final game last season on Twitter, you wrote all of that for that. So I know it's it was a really hard fought game. I think I speak for, you know, all of Rutgers Nation when I say, you know, your group, you guys gave us Rutgers fans something that we could have never imagined. And, you know, the fan base, Rutgers Nation couldn't have been prouder of what you guys accomplished and, and what the group accomplished. Just that that tweet, I, I was always wondering about that. You know, tell me kind of like where that came from and, and what that meant. Uh yeah, I, I just felt like uh, um it was it was a really long year with a, a lot of sacrifices from a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Um, so to just, just more so the way we went out, um, 
I think we all really believe that, I mean, Houston was a really good team uh, and they ended up going to the final four, but just the way that game ended didn't sit well. Um, just with all the, the sacrifices, like I said, that, that went into it from everybody. Um, so I, I was just like, that, that wasn't the way that I wanted the season to kind of end. Of course. Yeah. I mean, the close ones, uh, of course, always sting the most. And, you know, that game is as close as any game will ever, any basketball game will, will ever be. But, you know, you guys, you know, at least I think you guys can tell yourself we left that shit out on the court, you know? Absolutely. You know, nothing to not be proud of. And, you know, I know, as I said, the fans are so, so proud of what you guys accomplished. So coming, you know, moving on from last season, kind of, so your off season, you know, strength and conditioning wise, you made a huge jump from freshman to sophomore. So what's your off season been like, you know, this, this far and, uh, and going into next season, tell me a little bit about what you've been up to. Um, well, actually I played, I played the season with, basically a broken finger the whole season. So um, I got surgery on that and I was, wasn't able to do much for like a month and a half, two months. But uh, since then I've been back on campus and we've been working real hard. Uh, I'm almost in the best shape that I've ever been in, which is good. Um, kind of locking in on things that I have to work on. Uh, the whole program has kind of taken a, a different approach this off season on how we do things. And, and that's kind of exciting um, for how me. So? me. Um, just our approach. We're doing a lot of team oriented things. Our workouts are a little bit different than what they had been the last two years. Um, a lot of just, just a lot of, a lot of different things this off season, which has been exciting. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing this off season. Awesome. So also, you know, last year from freshman to sophomore, your three point shooting made a massive jump. You, you know, you took a lot more threes last year than you did freshman year. You know, what went into that, you know, growing confidence in your in your shot and and uh, making that jump for you. Tell me a little bit about how you developed your shot from you know year one to year two and, you know, your plans going forward with that type of thing. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of work, um, the confidence. I mean, the confidence has kind of always been there. It's just, it's both. I kind of try to do whatever's asked of me to do. And last year, uh, I, we kind of just needed a little bit more spacing on the offensive end. So um, I was in the corner a lot. So. Hell yeah. Dude, yeah. last year, the, the Paul Mulcahy corner <laughs> bang was on a roll. Yeah. So that that's kind of where that came from. Um, but my shot, I'm, I'm way more confident in my shot right now is the best I've ever felt my shot. Uh, coming into college, a lot of people kind of question my shooting ability, which is fine. Um, but I, I believe in it. I know how much work I put into it. So, hundred percent, man. Yeah, prove the haters wrong. Absolutely, yeah, and you've yeah. been doing that, hundred percent. So people always talk, Paul, about you know your heart, your hustle, your you know how well you make decisions on the court, your toughness. You know, everybody when it comes to you know you think of how tough Paul Mulcahy is, you think of taking an elbow from Luca Garza against Iowa, breaking his nose on the court. Like, t tell me, is that stuff you take pride in all of that? You know, stuff that doesn't just come from talent, that stuff that comes from, from hard work, you know, great mentality, you know, good upbringing from your parents, all that stuff. Is that stuff that, that you take pride in? Uh, yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. It's kind of like who I am as a person outside the court. Um, I mean, basketball is just a game, but there's a lot more to it. Um, you go through a lot of adversity and, and things like that. So it's just kind of not quitting and staying the course. Uh, that's what my high school coach preached to me for four years, just stay the course. And um, everybody kind of had the, was, was banged up last year. That's every year. Um, I think mine were a little bit more uh, out there. People kind of knew about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't say I'm a tough kid, but I just kind of roll with the punches and, and that's kind of how my, my parents raised me, like you said. Um, so yeah, that's where I come from. hundred percent. So one thing I kind of wanted to talk about my, uh, my guy, Max over here, he's going to play the audio. So there's a press conference after the Purdue game. I'm sure you know what I'm uh, talking about. So you got off your chest um, you talked a lot about the guys who aren't on the court as much and, you know, the backup guys, and you were so passionate about, you know, 
the work that they do for you guys, scout team, you know, on short notice, getting you guys ready to go. And um, so before you, you know, talk a little bit about that, my guy, Max over here is going to, my co-host, he's going to play some. Any of you guys can answer this. The I see that so the bench kind of, kind of getting again. Re- pretty loud and almost rowdy, it seems at times. Uh, do you guys hear that? What's that like for you out on the floor when, with no crowd being there? Yeah, I kind of been waiting to talk about this. Uh, our bench has done a phenomenal job. They're like that last season. Um, there was just a lot of crowd noise. We've got guys on the dream team, Aiden Terry, Daniel Loback, Luke Nathan, Caleb McConnell, Nick Brooks, and TJ Thompson, who come in every day. They learn a new team's plays in two days. They work hard. They give us the perfect replica of another team. They, they do everything that no one sees or talks about. But these guys have helped us all year, all last year. They come in and they work. And then they bring energy every day, positive energy on the bench. And they've done an absolutely amazing job. And and they don't often get talked about. But, like, those guys have, have set us up and put us in the position that we are right now. So, yeah, I mean, that's, like, my favorite Paul Mulcahy press conference of all time. You got so fired up for those guys. And, and that's just like a testament to the kind of teammate I know you are. You know, everybody sees it. All the Rutgers fans see that, you know, you're a vocal teammate. So for you, tell me a little bit about that press conference, what was going through your mind and, you know, why you wanted to get that out there. Yeah, I, I forgot that that was this year. Um, that, was, that, was, that was like one of our first 10 games. But, uh, yeah, my, my roommate last, for my first two years, uh, Daniel Loback, who I mentioned, um, one of like, the best people that I've ever met in my life, uh, works so hard, is like extremely talented. Um, he, he uh, I just watched him work so hard every day uh, in practice, and, and he got up his shots at night um, and, and I saw how much like the dream team had to be at practice, like 45 minutes before every day, just to learn plays and go over plays. Um, and those guys get like no credit ever, which is why I, I was, I was glad somebody had asked that question. Cause I was kind of waiting to speak up on it. Um, but that's with all the guys, but I just, I would, I would just see Daniel uh, every day, just put in a lot of work and I just, wanted to give him and, and everybody um, that I had mentioned some recognition. Like Luke Nathan was great the whole year with the energy on the bench. Um, yeah. His basketball and, and those guys, like everybody, they sacrifice a lot. Um, and, and they don't often get a chance to talk or, or get talked about. So I just felt like that was the right moment. Awesome, man. That's awesome. That's unbelievable. So yeah, dude. And, you know, especially, this year, you said it felt so long ago with COVID and everything. And obviously, you talked a lot about sacrifices you guys made, you know, COVID being obviously, you know, something that was so big, especially in the conference and everything like that. I mean, that's awesome. That's such a such a great moment. And I'm glad that uh, that we got to talk about that a little bit. So, you know, going forward into what we're expecting this season a little bit. So um, obviously, Miles Johnson and Jacob Young uh, transferred. So, you know, those are t- two guys who did a lot for you guys last year. Tell me, you know, what do you think uh, is going to change with, you know, the absence of those two guys on the court? Um, yeah, they, I mean, they transferred. Uh, Montez Mathis. Montez also. Mathis as well, of course. Yeah. And uh, Mamadou <laughs> is going to LaSalle. So we lost four uh, veteran guys. Uh, guys that put a lot into the program that helped um, a lot of us um, wish them nothing but the best miles will play Jacob in the pack 12. So whenever they play the first game, I'm going to try to catch that. But uh, I mean, we've got a really good young core. A lot of guys that didn't get too many minutes last year just because of COVID and things like that. But um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're real hungry the way that we went out last year. Um, the guys that we have, in the locker room um and and we wish those guys that that went to other places nothing but the best because they're great people and and sacrificed a lot um but we're we're excited about the group that we have the guys that we've brought in um yeah and just getting better each day that's awesome is there anybody specifically that you think might step up or or you think it's like a as a group um i mean i think everyone's gotten better um Guys that have been here for three, four years, I think they've gotten better. Guys that have been here for one and two years. Um, this offseason has been great. Uh, we've done a lot of team stuff, so so we're getting closer as a team. Um, 
our culture is getting better. Uh, I think just as a group, you're going to see maybe, maybe a different style of play here and there, but like still holding the same core values on offense and defense, but it, it. might look a little different just because there's different guys now. So a hundred percent. Have you gotten to, to talk at all? I mean, I'm sure with, uh, with Andre, Andre Hyatt from LSU, he's been on campus, I think already. So you've gotten to know him a little bit. Um, and then obviously just a couple of days ago, big Ralph over from uh, San Jose state, it should be, uh, you know, joining the group and everything have, from the transfers and stuff like that. What have, uh, what have you learned from those guys and, and, uh, what are you excited for with the, the new guys in the room? Um, I mean, college basketball is crazy right now with the transfer portal and stuff, but, uh, coach Peichel, uh, kind of made it, um, important that the guys that he brings in just want to win, um, that, that's what they're coming here for. That's what they want. So I think that's exciting just from a mindset standpoint. That's good for the locker room. Um, those guys are mature. Uh, they got big bodies. Uh, they're going to play hard. Um, Andre's a real cool kid from New York, so his family would be around more, more which is cool for him. Um, he could really shoot uh, long arms. Ralphie was here for his official. I talked to him for a little bit. Seems like he has a really good family, uh, good kid kid just wants to win so I'm excited for him to get on campus but uh I'm excited for those guys so. absolutely yeah and then um I'm definitely you know personally as a fan I'm super excited to see um some of the guys we only got a hint of last year like Oscar Dean uh you know Oscar Palmquist Dean Reber um Jaden Jones is a guy who you know came in uh halfway through the season last year who you know I've seen has some big time talent being a a, a guard with Jaden you know I wanted to ask you a little bit about him what is his game like what are you expecting to see from him yeah yeah Jaden a uh, big kid young six seven six eight um can really shoot uh yeah he I mean he left high school early uh finished early to come here so that that you know that takes a lot um good kid uh but yeah yeah I'm excited for Jaden to to finally because last year it was kind of tough to just get thrown in there so of course now, yeah he's got some time under his belt and I'm excited for him Absolutely. So, you know, in terms of mental preparation for you, you know, um, you know, you might see some more minutes this year. How are you getting mentally prepared for even more minutes, you know, this year than than last year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm ready. Um, I played the last two years in the best conference in the country uh, against some really, really good guys. I've seen a lot of things. Um, I mean, we've won the most that we've ever won. So I'm kind of ready to, to show a lot more, um, kind of be myself completely and um, help the team win, which is most important. So. No doubt. So, you know, in basketball these days, we don't see as much as the past first and share the ball mentality among point guards. But, you know, that's a really special part of your game that you clearly, you know, are big about. And where did that come from? You know, a part of your game, just like that pass first mentality and sharing the ball with your teammates and, you know, these flashy passes that you're capable of. Tell me kind of where that came from and, uh, and why you like that part of your game. Uh, I like to win. And I think like you've seen um, in the FIBA games, probably like these European teams that move the ball a lot, uh, they beat, I mean, the USA team. Uh, so I think it, it helps in winning. I mean, I've played a lot of basketball, so I have a pretty good feel. Um, when I was younger, uh, I always wanted to play, like, with the older guys, and I wasn't, like, big enough to, but they would pick me if I got on the ball. Um, and then playing in high school, I had a really good coach who kind of just preached making the right play. And um, it's kind of like a lost art, and some people might not – agree with it but I just think making the right play is, is beneficial for everybody and uh, I think that's where the passing kind of comes from no doubt I like that so you know this season obviously we're getting the return of the the Garden State Hardwood Classic with with Seton Hall obviously a big rivalry there you know uh, CJ CJ Nobile obviously thinks that his guys are going to run us out of the gym but that's obviously not the case 
um everybody we had a collab episode with front office guys so pat and cj were came on our show which was really cool so everybody knows about you know cj and his bullcrap seat and hall antics that he's up to but uh but tell me a little bit why you're excited for the return of that uh one we didn't get it last year uh we felt like we could have played it but we didn't get it um my they were, they were scared they were scared of you guys that's that's what happened <laughs> I don't know what happened, but uh, it would have been cool to play last year, obviously. But my freshman year was insane. Um, really fun game, like crazy atmosphere. Um, so I'm kind of cool. It'll be cool to kind of have that back. Uh, I think it's at the Prudential Center. Um, I mean, hopefully they let all the fans go. Uh, and and just, just I mean, it's, it's another game. But um, from like a fan's perspective, I could see how, how it could be. Uh, a big deal or exciting so no doubt yeah I was at the game your freshman year bro I crashed my car on the way to the game and then I find I was like screw I, I, I was like and then I was like I didn't even care bro I was so focused on getting to this game I didn't even care that I crashed my car I get to the game I get to the game finally I make it right in for tip bro I get there I'm with you know my brother's a Rutgers alumni so so we were all hanging there going crazy and you guys got off to that fast start. That was like the most, I've been to a bunch of Rutgers games. That was the most fun game I've ever been to. And CJ, <laughs> CJ and all his cousins were sitting like two rows in front of us, bro. They all had to leave early because they yeah. were so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. That was insane. That was a crazy day for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing quick that I want to talk to you about um, with the new NCAA rules around name, image and likeness, players being able to profit off themselves and stuff like that. You know, Geo Baker was a huge part in leading the charge on that, you know, within the players. And uh, what was it like? You know, obviously, Geo's Geo's a huge you know, leader in the room. He's a huge leader. And seeing him kind of take charge on that and now he's doing his own jersey and i saw the the culture changers uh sweatshirts that he put out which are super dope tell me a little bit about what that experience was like seeing geo do that and if you have any plans for yourself with the, the whole name image and likeness thing yeah uh geo was he was a uh, very outspoken about it um which is it's cool um and like a lot of people were probably afraid to kind of speak on it, but he had him and his group, uh, I think they did a really good job applying kind of pressure and um, making it a, a, a conversation. Um, and, and a lot of stuff happened during the NCAA tournament, uh, which I thought shed a lot of light on it. Um, so it, I'm happy that Gio has like taken that, that stance and, and, um, I hope all of this stuff does does really well, um, but I mean it, it's cool the NLI stuff to just to have the opportunity to. Um, I I think the more uh, a a team is successful, um, the better each player has at, at maybe profit profiting off their name. Um, me personally, I have uh, some stuff, but. I'm not in a rush to put things out. I kind of want to do it the right way because um, there's a lot of – everything's new to everybody. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules that people don't know. Right. Um, and then I have I have a non-for-profit or a non-for-profit that uh, I'm kind of – outside of basketball, that's what I want to kind of generate the most money for. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and kind of kind of do that, but – uh no, I'm really happy that that Gio got it done, um, and I hope he kind of reaps the the benefits of of all that. So, yeah. no doubt, if there's a Paul Mulcahy signature headband coming out, I will be purchasing one of those. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's there, there's some things. Um, <laughs> I mean, if we win, uh, it'll do better. But if we don't win, then it might not do that good. So, <laughs> yeah. no doubt. But um. Last thing that I wanted to ask you, one piece of advice, we ask a lot of people this, one piece of advice you'd give to a young guy trying to, you know, play division one basketball. First of all, these have been great questions. Thanks, I, Paul. Because a lot <laughs> of times I get asked the same questions, but like you did your research, like this is, this is, this has been really good. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, dude, I had to come. I had to be a little original. You know, I, I watch like every Rutgers game. So there's so much stuff that I already know, but there's like stuff that you can never find out unless you're actually talking to players. So. No, I, I really appreciate it because like you've asked a lot of questions that I haven't gotten before. So this is this is cool. So a question that I would give to a younger kid trying to play basketball. Yeah, D1, power five type thing. Uh, I'd say stay the course. Um there's a lot of nonsense in the world, in the basketball world. Um, work hard, be a good person, uh, stay kind of true to yourself. And as long as you stay the course, I think everything kind of works out in your favor and it works out for the right reasons. But there's going to be a lot of highs and lows. That's kind of part of the life. But you just got to know what your know what your goals are. Uh, don't settle and, and stay the course. So, No doubt, dude. It was so awesome having you on today. This was a real privilege. You know, I'm so pumped to see you guys run it back. I know you guys are going to do special things this year. You know, Gio and Ron Harper coming back. It's going to be it's going to be a special year for sure. And, you know, I know you guys are going to do great things, man. Thank you so much for the time. Appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it, bro. Yes, yeah, I'll come back on. This, this was fun. hundred so. percent. Yeah, dude, we would love yeah. to have you back on sometime. hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. All right, Paul. Thanks again. All right. Take care. I'll stay in touch for sure. All right. Yeah. No, thank you for this. Uh, just me- so. Appreciate it. Welcome back from the interview with Rutgers men's basketball guard, Paul Mulcahy. That was so much fun. Absolutely. Shout out to everybody who made that possible. Yeah. As well. Shout out to everyone who helped out with that, you know, helped make that happen. And a big thank you to Paul, of course, you know, and best of luck this year too. Yeah. Another big season coming up for Rutgers. They're going to be good. Yeah. They're going to be, gonna really be good. very good. So I'm really excited to see, you know, how they follow up last year's impressive performance, the p- big postseason run. Ooh, we should have led off into the interview been like, are you ready? That would have been pretty cool. Missed was- opportunity. Yeah. No, you're right. Missed opportunity. Uh, it's, it's okay. No, yeah, you're right about that for sure. That would have been exciting. But we're back. We are. So let's talk about some baseball. Yeah. we. You know, how can we not talk about the MLB? As Max said earlier, and I quote, they're in the thick of the season. Yes, Evan. We're in the thick of the season. Yeah. So, you know, second half's underway. And, you know, there's a lot to be excited about if you're into baseball right now. Absolutely. You know, I, I really... I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Red Sox, of course, still in first place. You know, a couple losses, you know, to start off in the second half. They won their first game, but then, you know, lost a couple. But, you know, I think they're really good, and I think they're going to do big things. I think the Mets are really good. I think the Mets are really good. I think the Giants in the West are actually the team to look out for. I, I think the Padres are the team to look out for. They are. No, dude, that West division with the Padres, the, the Dodgers. The Brewers aren't bad either. Yeah, no, the, Do- the the Brewers aren't the bad. But I'm saying Dodgers, Padres, Giants in one division. They You're are, right. You You're know, right. Like, there's you could the whole season, you could count on one hand how many games have been separating those teams. Exactly. So that's crazy. Yes, the Brewers are good. The Brewers the, are really the good, The White too. Sox are super White impressive. White Sox are having a good season. Yeah. And the White Sox, you know, for those, for those in, you know, who know – once Louise Robber and Eloy Jimenez get back, that team's only getting way more deadly. So, you know, you really got to look out for the White Sox because I think that's for they're obviously a for sure postseason team, I'd say. So the trade deadline's also coming up. So, you know, look for some pieces to be dealt all over the league. Very interested. I kind of want to talk about who's going to be buyers and who's going to be sellers. And honestly, it's specifically the team that I'm referencing is that because nobody knows what they're actually going to do is the Yankees. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that as well this weekend. We we have an interview next week that will kind of talk about the Yankees a little bit with them. But I I was editing that and I was thinking about that as well. It's like, are they going to be sellers? Because they have some good pieces that they could get some good good return for yeah you know yeah but they also played kind of well this weekend you know they they played two okay games right but that's and then also, they got smacked right but that's like one of the games they won was also six innings just being a defensive no, red Sox. no fan. no absolutely i'm not but, gonna disagree but, with you right. Right, but the thing that I, the thing I think the Yankees need to you know be sellers because this is not this whole season, regardless of if they've had good streaks, bad streaks, is not the standard that you know of Yankee baseball that people are accustomed to. They're behind the, not only the Rays but the Red Sox as well. So you know you're 
you're fighting for a wild card spot in a season where things just don't feel right. The Yankees have always been buyers, and you know maybe it's time you go and try to get some prospects that can you know keep you competitive in the future. You know, I don't disagree. So I'm just that's just kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, yes, the Yankees still don't win World Series even though they spend a crazy amount of money, but you know, at least go get some good prospects for what you for what you have. You know. Yeah, I I don't disagree. I mean, but I won't. I wouldn't blame them if they held on to who they have now, though. If they were, if they weren't sellers, you know. Yeah. No, I I, I wouldn't blame them because they do have just such a right. But don't go they, out. They just have such a good roster. I feel like it's just an opportunity. But don't go out and make some like insane move to try to like fix your team be, because you. I don't think there's many moves that the Yankees can make. Like Starling Marte, like is a rumor, like. You know, you get Marte. That's not going to uh, magically make you a World Series competitor. I don't think Starling Marte is making anyone uh, going from you know a third place team fighting for a wild card spot to a World Series competitor. So that's you know one of the people I was hearing rumors about. So I'm just saying, you're not wrong. I appreciate it. Yeah. So that's kind of what how I'm feeling. You know, there will be you know some more Yankees talk going forward next week. You guys will hear some of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, not because I know Yankee fans are in a very like unfamiliar territory right now. Well, it's not really unfamiliar. They haven't won since 2009. Yeah, but they may at least make the playoffs. You're all the right. Time. You're and right with that. And that's fun. <laughs> You're right with that. They do make the playoffs. Yeah. So we're gonna move on now. But that was very uh, intriguing. Yeah. You know. Good word. Thanks. Yeah. So, obviously, NBA Finals is the last thing we're going to talk about. So, it's very hard for us to talk about this right now. Obviously, because it's a super big deal. Right now, it's 45 to 40. In game six. In game six. We, we record have on... the live, the live yeah. score up right now. We record on Tuesdays. You all as know that. As everybody knows. As we tell you every single <laughs> week. So, the Bucks might win tonight. That's a possibility. Or Game 7 could be forced. That's also exciting. Both fun and exciting. Evan- <laughs> I love it. Both fun and exciting. <laughs> Who doesn't love a Game 7? Yeah, absolutely. One of the- game 7s could be the best thing in professional sports. Except for the Super Bowl. Discussion for another time. Yeah, um, I-, I definitely wouldn't wouldn't say that. Okay, but discussion for another time. Um our prediction of Suns and Six kind of is shot. I mean, it's it's not shot. It's just, it, I mean, it, it no, it, it's shot. It's, it's not kind of shot. It's it, a hun- it, it's, it is a hundred percent. It is a hundred percent done. Yeah, it's done. No chance. So, what do you think? Do you Suns think- and Seven, baby? Let's go. Suns and Seven. I agree. Okay, so hopefully by the time this podcast gets released, the Suns will be on their way to Game Seven. That's correct. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Giannis has been great. He has. Yeah. For a guy, like for a guy who been... was unsure if he was going to be able to play a game in this series coming into it, he's really, you know, stepped up big time. Drew Holiday, although his offense hasn't been nuts, his defense has been you off know, the charts. Some might say his defense has been carrying a little bit. You know, that's yeah. been great. Giannis, it's good to see that. Um, I mean, I feel like he's kind of proven the doubters wrong this series. Everybody said either he wasn't going to play or that when he would, he was just not going to be effective because he can't score outside right. of going down low. But he's right. just dunking on everyone and it doesn't fucking matter. Right. And then, you know, Bobby Portis is a role player. has been doing a lot of good things for you the You like Bucks. him a lot, right? Yeah, I like Bobby Portis. You know, looking at the Suns, what's kind of been going wrong? Booker, you know... 40-point performances, and they still can't find a way. CP3 is not doing what he was in the beginning of the series and previous series. CP3 needs to step it up a little bit. Eight and same deal, exact thing. You know, do what you've been doing. Stop, you know, don't change things now, you know? I think you just got to stick to it, and the Suns can, you know, it's, it's a young team, but I think they can do this. And I think also Cameron Johnson is a guy that needs to get involved. A lot of people have been saying it, but you need to get Cam Johnson the ball. He's dangerous. Same thing with Jay Crowder. Get everyone involved. You can't rely on Booker to do everything, and then you're just going to magically win the game. It needs to. You need to go back to the Suns that we the saw Suns ball against that, the Lakers. That won them the series before. Right. The spreading out the offense, sharing the ball. Getting people open, looking right. for open looks, three right. pointers in the corner. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you're saying. I wholeheartedly agree. Right. So that's how they're going to win the series. Absolutely. And Monty Williams is a great coach, in my opinion. And I think uh, I think they're going to figure it out. But I might just stand correct, and the Bucks could just say like, "Hey, fuck you, Evan," and win tonight. Yeah, fuck you, Max, as well. Yeah. So that would be funny if yeah. you know. But 
Very possible. But it's all about the content, guys. We had to say something. You know, had to, it's had NBA to touch final. on like, it. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we couldn't just not touch on the NBA Finals. Right. It's just a difficult time between recording and when the, yeah. ga- when the game honestly, is being played. Honestly, yeah. I feel like the NBA Finals have just been like that fucking every week. Like, we've recorded on a Tuesday, and they're playing while we're recording. How come they can't play on a Thursday, and can't we talk about that? There's never, like, a day in between, you know? So we could, like, yeah, I don't know. Or a couple days in between. I agree. I don't know. I'm just rambling and anyway. complaining. Anyways. Anyways. Guys, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Follow the Instagram, guys. The YouTube. Consider subscribing on Patreon. Patreon. For an ad-free broadcast, you get early access to episodes a day early, behind-the-scenes content, and exclusive content, and it's, it's awesome. So we've got yep. a really special announcement coming within the next week or so. Be sure to look out for that, guys. Always special announcements incoming here at a Washed Up Sports Podcast. We're going up, guys. It's been an unbelievable ride through our first 32 episodes, and we couldn't have done it thanks to the support from everyone. Absolutely, yeah. We got a fun video coming out soon. We're going to be testing out some sticky substances. As you know, we've been trying to cover this as much as we can. So we're going to test them out, see see what they do, and bring a camera out there. See if we could... Throw a little live bullpen. Yeah. We got a nice catcher helmet for Evan to wear. Yo, maybe I'll bring a bat, too, and try to just, like, rip homers off of you. I don't think he'd be able to hit me. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We... You know what? I think we should change it up. Let me use all the substances and see if you can hit and all And get me. someone else to catch and just let me take yeah. live at bat. Yeah. <laughs> that could be electric, too. That could be good. Yeah. Guys, I mean, that might be coming. We'll just wait. Live at bats? I mean, I might not. he might not be able to beat me in golf, but he probably can't beat me in baseball either. No, I, I could beat him in both. And I beat him in basketball. That's still up on you on the YouTube. You did beat me in basketball. I'd like to play again soon. We could do that. To, you know, we could do that. Just to show you that I'm probably better than you. I don't think so. I don't know. All right, guys. All right, guys. Well, thank you, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You know the whole deal. Check out our latest episode here if you want. And please consider subscribing on Patreon. It helps us out a lot. Thanks, guys.